I'll just cut straight to it. You want a huge jump range in Elite Dangerous, and for that you need the best frameshift drive in the game. That's why I'm here to show you how to get it with the minimum grind and the maximum fun. This video will cover buying and engineering the drive. First of all, if you play on console or in legacy mode on PC, the best drive in the game is still the V1 pre-engineered model. The video linked in the corner and the description can help you unlock that. So if you're still here, let's start by buying the right stock module. Open Outfitting and navigate to Core Modules. Check the size of your FSD, that's this number here. For me it's a 6. Next head over to the site's inara.cz, use the Outfitting search, enter your current system and in the module box type your FSD size followed by ASCO. For example, if your FSD is a size 6, you would type 6A SCO. Then select the drive and hit search. Head to any station in the resulting list. Once you arrive, go to Outfitting and install the appropriate drive. If you already have one of these two engineers unlocked, you can skip on to the next chapter. However, if you haven't yet, I'll briefly explain how to unlock Elvira Martuk. To be invited to Martuk space, you need to travel 300 light years from your starting system. This is easy enough with the FSD you just bought, so just chuck on a fuel scoop and head out in any direction. When you meet the distance requirement, you should get a message from Martuk inviting you to her base in the Kun system. To begin engineering, you'll need to supply her with three Sunhill relics. These are easy enough to find. Just buy them in the station Chernovsky City in the Nuguri system. Buy three relics from the commodities board and set a course for Martuk space by hitting bookmarks, engineers. When you arrive, donate the relics and hey presto, engineering. These are the materials you need to more or less guarantee a maxed out drive. There's a little bit of RNG here, so you might not need all of everything, but I would just grab it all to avoid disappointment. To check if you already have the necessary materials, open your right hand panel and select the inventory tab. Scroll down to the materials section to find your current stock of raw and manufactured materials. Compare your numbers to the red and green items on the list and note down any you still need to collect. Then go to the next tab down, Encoded Materials, and do the same with the blue items on this list. Uh, as a quick side note, you could make this process easier by linking your account to Inara or an app called ED Engineer, but setting these up is a bit beyond the scope of this video. Now have a look at your list of materials you need. If you require red or manufactured materials, keep watching because I'll cover how to gather them next. If you need green or raw materials, check out the chapter called Gathering Raw Materials. And if you need blue materials or encoded data, you know what to do. I've already done a proper video on this method, so check out this link if you want a full breakdown. Still, I'll give you the concise version here. In any combat ship, ideally one fitted with a small cargo rack and collector limpets, head to any high or hazardous resource extraction sites in a planet's rings. When you arrive, look out for any large wanted ship, but preferably an anaconda. After finding a target, simply destroy it. Amongst the wreckage, you should spot some valuable materials. Maneuver so your vessel is just above the wreckage, then open your cargo scoop and deploy your limpets if you have them. And there you go, you're getting some materials. Look out for another target and repeat until you get the materials you're after. If there's a particular material you can't seem to find, you can trade for it at any nearby manufactured material trader. To find your nearest, head back to inara.cz. This time hit search nearest, Input your current system and in Station Services, select Material Trader. Hit Search and head to any result below that has Manufactured as the trader type. Once you land, open Contacts and Material Trader. From here you can swap the materials that you have too many of for the ones you need. Truth be told, you don't need many raw materials for this FSD, but if you go out gathering them, it's nice to grab a decent chunk. Before you set off to gather, make sure your ship is equipped with a detailed surface scanner and an SRV. Make your way to the Colli Disky system and set a course for body C6A. This moon is about 90,000 light seconds from the jump in point, so it's definitely a job for your new supercruise overcharge. Point the ship in the right direction and hit the boost button. After a few seconds, you should be rocketing forward toward the body. Keep an eye on your fuel and heat, hitting the boost button again to stop if things are looking a bit hairy. To cover this sort of distance, you'll need to overcharge multiple times. Wait for the cooldown to finish, check on your fuel levels, and if it looks good, hit the boost and repeat. 
Once you finally reach the moon, detailed surface scan the body. You should see four human signal sources, one of which is a crashed ship. Head to this spot and land nearby. Hop out in your SRV and first of all, take a look around. I always find it super fun to drive around a crashed ship, it's, it's just awesome. When you want to get down to business, find one of the three cargo racks scattered around the crash site and fire at it with your SRV's cannon. The rack should drop some rare raw materials. Open the cargo scoop, pick these up, then move on to the next cargo rack and repeat. Once you've shot out all the cargo racks, re-log the game from the main menu. Ugh, a re-log. Uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, this should respawn all the cargo racks to be uploaded again for more materials. Once you're happy with your haul, or just get bored and think it'll be fine, set a course for Tretian Terminal in the nearby Ross 444 system. On arrival, select Contact, Material Trader, and swap some of your high-grade materials for the arsenic, manganese, and phosphorus that we'll need. For this method, you'll need the Frameshift Wake Scanner, ideally A-rated. Also, a small, fast chip helps. In the Galaxy map, hit Pilots Federation on the left-hand side, sort by state, and uncheck everything apart from famine. Now, have a look around the Galaxy map, searching for a pink dot. It might take a second, but eventually you'll find one. As long as it says famine here, and the population is more than about 100,000, that's good. Make your way to this system and open your left-hand menu. In the Navigation tab, use this button to filter for points of interest. Hopefully, you'll spot something in the list called a distribution center. If not, you'll have to find another famine system to check. At any rate, when you find a distribution center, head over to it. After dropping in, you should spot three Type 9s, followed by some small ships. These guys are here to collect rations from the T9s, after which they'll jump out, leaving high wakes. Those are what we'll be scanning. When you spot a wake in the contact menu, target it and fly within 4 kilometers of it. Hold down the scan button until this bar fills up. Completing this scan will probably give you some encoded data, as shown in the top right corner. After scanning, check contacts for another wake and scan it. Should you run out, return to the T9s and wait. A new wave of small ships leaves the area roughly every minute, so you'll get a steady flow of new wakes to scan. And that's basically it. I'll note quickly that this method is rather luck dependent. To get the needed materials, it could take about 5 minutes or up to half an hour. Still, anything to avoid that Jameson's crash site. Oh boy, that is boring. Well, you've beat the grindy bit, now it's time to reap the rewards. Make your way to Martuk or Farseer's base, select Engineer's Workshop and Frameshift Drive. Go to the Increase Range mod and click Generate Modification. Keep clicking this button until the Grade 2 bar opens. Hover over that, then keep clicking Generate Modification until the Grade 3 option opens, and etc. When you reach Grade 5, your aim is to fill this bar all the way to the end, so these cogs are filled with ticks. Theoretically, the amount of materials I listed should get you there, but there's a tiny chance it won't quite make it. If that's the case, I'm really sorry, but you'll still have a bang in FSD, and you can finish it off later with some more materials. While you're still here, you'll want to chuck an experimental effect on the drive. Hit this button to enter the menu. On a drive of size 4 or smaller, apply the deep charge effect. On a size 5 or larger, pick Mass Manager instead. And with that, you have the best possible FSD in the game. I hope that your new drive helps you push your build to that next level. If you've got any questions, concerns or advice for others, please throw it in the comments below. I love reading your thoughts. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Hold on to your space legs and remember your limpets. Until next time, it's goodbye from Commander Dechiri.